Wow, that's gonna be some good eating. I'm Zachary Fowler, and that's Chris Thorne, and this is the 30 Days Survival Challenge, Texas. There's only one rule. If you want to eat, you got to catch and cook it. Yeah. <sighs> Good morning. Oh, it's so cool and cozy. I don't want to get out of bed. But we didn't catch a fish last night. We left our night lines in, so there might be something down there. Early bird gets the worm, so I'm heading out. Let's do this. Day 11. Here I come. <laughs> Thought I felt the breeze. <laughs> Seem to get a good shot of them though. Not with this camera. Jumped so many deer coming down towards the river already. Oh my goodness, there's a big old buck right there. Ah, this camera just doesn't do it justice. This is the 80D. I don't have a, a zoom lens on it that can get over there. I'll digitally zoom it in, but it's gonna look like crud. That's too bad. That's a nice, nice rack on him. There's another filming opportunity to miss. A whole bunch of turkeys. There must have been 50 of them moving off as I come in. I could have held still and got a shot of them for you, but I just can't in ADD. I don't have a bigger lens for it. Switching out lenses while you're trying to do stuff like this just doesn't quite work. The uh, better solution will be my XA30 that I use for my night filming when we're here. It has better night light, but I don't like the full on colors of it. And to edit all this and do everything and color correct so it's perfect, it's not, and it looks a little softer than the 80D. When it comes to being outdoors here like this and being able to zoom in on something, being able to show the wildlife, I'm missing, I'm missing some stuff, I'm dropping the ball. We'll get it figured out one of these days. Until then, we're gonna have some fun down at the river and hopefully catch ourselves some big stuff. The water is down and I'm hoping there's something already on my lines. Look at that raging torrent of silent death. Would not want to get swept away in that. All right, let's get set up and see what's going on down here. Holy cow. Holy cow. Uh, oh, that's not a monster catfish, that's a turtle. Man, if I can get down here without sinking out of sight or falling in, that'll be a miracle. Oh man, I got a monster soft shelled turtle here. Oh, wow. Look at that. Look at the size of that guy. Wow, when I first saw him pop out of the water, I thought that was the head of a monster catfish. That's why I was all, holy cow. Holy cow. Wow. That's gonna be some good eating. This is a large, large soft shelled turtle. Look at him compared to the size of my head. I get my head too close to him. Yeah, these guys are a mean, can be one mean turtle here. Beautiful. Look at the size of him. There's a big, soft-shelled turtle. But when he came up out of the water, all I saw at first was like this part coming out. I thought that was like the mouth. I thought that was like the mouth of one of those monster catfishes you see on the, you know, some YouTube video covers. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You mainly dispatch him. You mainly dispatch him as quickly as possible. Now we got ourselves some. Good eating. What is 
splashing around down there. I gotta get these hooks back in the water and bait it up. Sounds like there's some activity in the area. All right, threw some more bits of the raccoon liver on there. See what we can catch. Wow, that was a big old tree and a tree trunk and some other stuff. Like four or five times the size of me. Doesn't look like much probably on camera, but man, there's a lot of stuff floating down here and a lot of garbage. 40 ouncer of Bud Light or something looks like right there. Bottles and lots of lots of refuse. Just keeps sliding by ever since this was coming through. All my hooks are baited and I think it's time for some coffee. I didn't want to bring my whole pot with me so I brought something really neat. A bear bowl. Which is a foldable bowl. But it's not meant to have fire like on a fire. You just stick it on a fire. So I'm going to try and stick it on a rocket stove. Here I'm going to dig into the bank and see if I can get myself some coffee made. While I wait to catch some fish. And this is an Iona shovel. Smaller than my cold steel that I always carry. But they're one of our sponsors. So I'm going to show them some love. And I'm actually thinking this is going to work better than my cold steel. Because I want a small hole for my rocket stove. So the flames don't come up and damage my bear bowl. This was, this was Chris's seat last night. So, so if we have another fire here, he might not be too happy that I turned his seat into my coffee maker. <laughs> Oh yeah, this is the perfect shovel for this. Oh, I may have just have found another shovel I like just as much as my cold steel shovel. This thing's solid, it's got a sharpened edge so you can use it for cutting the roots, a pick on the back of the head, unscrews so you can fill it full of stuff like survival gear, fishing stuff, and as always, I have to say, the useless compass that people put on the back of these things just to add one more gimmick to it. That's not their fault. Everybody does it. Uh, it's just, actually, I think they actually may be pointing north. Maybe it's not so useless. Huh. Well, anyways, here's the fire pit, the uh, rocket stove hole down in there. I cut a couple slits for exhaust to leak out when the bear bowl sits on top. And I'll start a fire and stick it into there. And then the, it'll exhaust up through here, creating a chimney effect, creating extreme heat onto the bottom of the bear bowl instead of flames that come up and around it and damage it. bowl's a little dirty from using it like a plate, so I'm gonna bring a little bit of water to a boil first. See if this thing will even work before I get all crazy and dump the coffee in there and find out I just wasted some. Can't be wasting coffee. Only have a minimal supply that's gotta last me 30 days. <laughs> Let's see, I'll do this right. All right. Snap there, and bring it together, and snap there. And you have a genius little bowl made out of uh, wa uh, food safe stuff with a little plate on the bottom. That's where the fire's gonna hit. And that looks like that's gonna work pretty good. So, if, as long as it's just warm exhaust gases coming up and there's enough straight heat just coming on the bottom, I think she'll be safe. I know they're pretty much designed for camping burners and stuff. So, maybe as time goes on, they'll figure out a better way to even make it so designed to plop right in a fire. But I think this will work, because it'll be concentrated rocket stove heat. A little bit of water from my grill. I'm gonna have to refill this from the river. This is like a French press for cleaning water. Pull it out like that, put the dirty water in here, beep, down, boom, clean water in here. Water, doesn't look too bad from the river. I went upstream where it's not swirling around so bad. I do like the gravity feed 
bags bag that we have at camp that works really nice you don't have to do any of this pressing down on it but when you're on the trail and you're out here you want to make some coffee down by the river I could be boiling the water but this cleans out 99% of things it says so yeehaw and once you have the bottle the filters underneath oh look at that clean water now you can see right to the bottom where the filter is like butter Woo! Listen to that go now. Like in the waxwood stick from Hangar 51. Thank you guys for sending that to me. I need to get it so it's just hot coals down there. I filled it full of wood up here though, and it's lots of flames. I don't want to get that. Let's see what happens if I put it on. Actually, that might be okay. I see only little flames looking out around the bowl. I think that's actually fairly safe. All right, we have ignition. Bring that to a boil, rinse my pot out. We'll have coffee. Sitting by the, man, does life get any better than this? I'll be sitting by the river, my rocket stove, my coffee made in my bear bowl, waiting for another fish, or a fish. Ah, oh, praise God, what a beautiful day. It's so easy to clean too. You just unsnap it and boom. Wipe it clean. Dishwasher friendly. No, I don't know if it's dishwasher friendly. <laughs> I just feel like I'm doing an infomercial. I'm not trying to. I'm just having fun in the morning here. There. There's nothing like having that uh, soup flavored, catfish flavored soup or whatever I ate out of it before. Raccoon flavored soup taste to my coffee. So now it's clean. I gotta talk to him about doing a collab on a uh, a coffee percolator or something. A snap together coffee pot. How cool would that be? Snaps together, maybe comes to a little pile pyramid in the middle, and it has the little perk piece in that goes into it or something that folds up. And you put it on your fire, and you got yourself a uh, perk fold up perk pot. Copy about with me, fold it up into some paper here from the uh, Sportsman's Annual there, Texas, telling us what the game laws are. Took the middle pages of advertisement out here to hold my coffee. That's a little bit more than I need, I think, too. Good morning! What's going on, bud? We got ourselves a turtle! Look at the size of that guy. That is oh a my one goodness. large soft shelled turtle. Wow! Dude, he's a beast! Yeah, that's a meal and then some. Oh, yeah. We're gonna be eating well today. Finally. There we are. I mean, we've still got that raccoon soup. I'd say there's still another meal or so in there, and we could probably have three days worth of souping if we really. I was like, I think our, I think our weigh-in results are going to be skewed because we're going to be full. <laughs> right? <laughs> now we can just cook her up. Oh. There we go. She's been boiling away for about five minutes. I say that's good. Take it off of there and let it cool off so I can have my coffee. Look at the fire just glowing away in there. I can put a pan on top of there and cook. I don't know how long it'll last. It's supposed to rain later today, or within a couple hours here. 
So we're not gonna be hanging out down here for very long. We gotta go up, do a live stream weigh in. Find out how much weight we've lost up till now. It's 11 days in, we weighed in on day three. I was down three pounds. And let's see, I'm guessing I will be down probably five to seven pounds for the seven days it's been since the weigh in. So what do you think you're gonna weigh in at? I have no idea. Uh, it depends on how wet my clothes get before the weigh in. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I'd say about five, five, six pounds maybe. It just, yeah. I bet you're a pound a day, uh, you say six pounds? Yeah. I six, six pounds, one ounce. Okay. <laughs> Jeopardy slammed. This price was right. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> Mm. Come on, Mr. Turtle. I'll wrap you up. I did it. I always said that from the beginning. You never lie your pack down with it facing the back of your pack. Otherwise, you put this on and you're basically getting scourged. And I laid it right down in all these. Make sure I get them all before I throw this thing on. Ow! Ow! Ow, little balls of hate, as Chris calls them. Painful little buggers, like Velcro from hell. I didn't catch any more fish, and I didn't even get to finish my coffee, so I got, a, I got takeout. <laughs> Good morning, YouTube. We are live out. So if you watched it while we were out there, this live stream did not go well. For some reason, the quality was horrible because the uh, cell phone company, my cell phone company, was shunting down my data. So I was, I had infinite data, but at a very low upload speed or some foolishness. And, uh, and then it became even more confusing because we had bacon cooking in the background with Bob Hansler cooking up some bacon from our new sponsor, Butcher Box, which we're trying to give a shout out for. And uh, they... Made everybody very confused, thinking we're out there eating bacon the whole time when we're not eating bacon. The whole point was that since we had had nothing but rattlesnakes and raccoons, we were going to eat a piece of bacon if people donated in the super chat a certain amount of money, and if they didn't, we had to eat a chili patina, which are these like nuclear hot berries. So we weighed in. Here we go. One ninety. One ninety. 250 down five pounds. All right, live stream is over. This is all of our stuff for the booster so we could do the live streams. Chris is up saying goodbye to Jen. Had time to head back out to the camp. Got the turtle still strapped to my back. And we did not eat the bacon. For those of you that caught the live stream and the clip that I put here, it didn't work out. Everybody would rather see us eat a hot chili patino. Which burned like the dickens but I kind of liked it. I can see mixing some of those into my food as I'm out here. I'll have to mix them in after. Chris is not a fan. And, uh, and Jen, he's saying goodbye to Jen. He's going to join me out there so we can get, cook up our turtle, our soft shell turtle that we got. And uh, it wasn't actually that hard to uh, watch the bacon cooking and all that and walk away from it. Um, kind of like in the moment and down with everything we're doing. Feeling good about it. Have any, had anything to eat since yesterday breakfast and uh, I don't feel any worse for wear. But this is early on, something like that happens 30 or 40 days in, it drags at you more. Right now my body's in high gear, it started tuning up and digesting well. It's digesting my own body fats for energy because I'm in like a higher state of ketosis from the lack of carbs and sugar and loving life. I have to say, I am really excited about Butcher Box becoming one of our sponsors, getting on board. That happened last week when I came up to do the live stream. I saw the messages and contacted them. We put that all together for this week's live stream and the and the whole bacon thing. And because uh, I am a single guy now, and being a single guy, it's hard to keep my fridge stocked. I just don't remember to. Mostly, I shop day to day, and to have a monthly subscription of meat that comes in the mail that's in my freezer and I could pop it out, cook it up, and not have to pick out things at the store. It'll save me time at the store. And it's just such a treat to get something good in the mail. And because I like to do catch and cooks on my channel, but at home there isn't always that many opportunities. Hunting season's only a small time of the year. 
So most of the time when I do my videos, a lot of them are builds. So if I'm up in a tree hammocking and making a video about cooking up in the tree, boom, I can bring some of this with me, give them a shout out and make some beautiful stuff cooked up in a tree or something. one heavy turtle. Now I'm even more thankful that I made this little bench area. It's raining out there. I think my tarp right here, make a little fire just outside of that so I'm safe. I don't know how much more it's gonna rain. I might even grab some sticks and throw some across here so I can sit here and process up my dinner and get it on to cook. And I'll be safe no matter what comes for tonight. Woo! I love the outdoors. of birch bark, some shredded like jute line, and in the middle of that is this beautiful little candle infused with wood chips. So we'll put all that together and that should create a beautiful, can I say that one more time, a beautiful little fire to dry out this wet little bit of tinder. We'll give her a spark. Woo! There she goes. Away she goes. So I just split my stick and I'm pushing it down this thing here to split the push the split, but it's getting thinner on this side. So if you want to make a nice even split, you need to bend the thicker side so the split travels over to that side. So with this leverage, I can do that, pushing it in and push and push. And now it's starting to get thin on this side. So I switch it and go the other way. It's easier with thinner stuff because you can just do it by hand and go bend this side a little more than this side. You'll get a nice even split down the center, depending upon how many knots you have. There we go. It turned out fairly even on both ends. Yeehaw. And those will be my little surfaces here for the top of my table. Boom, two in a row, I'm on a roll, yeehaw. leg over here to push it up or push that down. I don't know. Pretty good. There it is. Table. Now I can sit here 
process up my turtle in comfort, and then make myself some dinner. Oh, wow, look at the size of this monster turtle. Uh, a meal, what a meal. So I'm gonna do them up. You can't see this because YouTube will be very unhappy and demonetize this and ruin the viability of all the videos. So I'm gonna blur this out. I'm gonna do this bad boy up, get him in the stew pot and have turtle soup for dinner. That's a lot of work. And look at the inside of the shell, the soft shell. For those of you that aren't squeamish, that's pretty crazy. Ribs, and this is all like cartilage and stuff. Pretty wild. All right, there is the turtle all processed up. There's some turtle eggs, and that's all meat. That one turtle, this entire like two and a half, three quarter, whatever it is, pot is jacked full of meat. That's a good meal. And for dinner though, we got more raccoon soup. That's what's left of it. We're gonna be eating that because this, like I noticed with the last turtle was very stiff and uh, it took a good overnight before it was soft and fell apart. So this is gonna be breakfast, lunch, and dinner tomorrow. When you're out doing this, there's not a lot of rest until you're into your bed at night. So after all of that work, now I gotta collect some grass and still keep going, clean my table off. So yeah, I decided to come over to Zach's house tonight, eat a meal. I think we're gonna play Yahtzee afterwards. Oh wait, we forgot to bushcraft that. Yeah. Whoops, no dice. Well, <laughs> We can have the, we should make a chess set or something so that we can actually... That's really complicated. Do you know how to play chess? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Hey, we should do that then. Make a chess set, then we can actually play a game. Well, we are going to have our raccoon soup tonight. While we are waiting for the soft shell turtle to cook overnight, we don't want to rush it. We want to slow and low. Right. Thank you, Lord, for the beautiful raccoon with all the fats in them. That's what I'm eating. Look at that. Big old chunks of fat. Strips of meat from the ribs. And stuff. It's real good. Hard to believe. A little adobo on there. If you haven't seen it already, that was two days ago. We got the raccoon so you can see a beautiful images of the processing and all that went into it. Chris got the raccoon in his trap and finished it off with the blowgun. And we cooked it, possum before that, rattlesnake, all kinds of good stuff. So check out the playlist link below on my channel, Fowler's Maker and Mischief, and the playlist for his channel where you can see his days that led up to this. And uh, we're doing really good. You want to check out what we've been up to, definitely. Go back and start from the beginning if this is your first episode. Oh, oh wait. Thank you, Lord, for this food. And our catch today of turtle and blessing us with just this beautiful adventure. Wonderful outdoors, Texas. Amen. Amen. On, on like Donkey Kong. Looking down with MCs like I'm mowing the lawn. I've heard this same song for 11 days. <laughs> like, yeah. That's the only song I know. The, the little snippet of Beastie Boys from back in the day when I used to. Or the whole Let It Go from like, what is it, uh, the Ice Queen movie or whatever? Yeah. Let it go. Whenever he gets moody, I say, Let it go. Let it go. And whenever he gets moody, I just bleep it out of my video. Oh, yeah, because I get real bad. <laughs> All right, I'm all tucked into my hammock. Whew. Long, long feeling day going down there. I'm feeling good. Got the turtle on. Took forever to process. Holy cow. That is not an easy thing to clean. Um, I, I wonder if there's some somebody out there that knows how to do it. I'd love to see 
what did they do to just be able to clean a giant soft shell turtle real quickly uh, is it'll hold us over but it's not gonna keep us thriving and we want to surf revival surf thrival I don't know something like that if I'm doing pretty good right now I'd say we're about there so yeehaw I will see you guys tomorrow if you stay tuned day 12 thanks for watching Fowler out